South Africa is the chair of the BRICS grouping and with me is the Sherpa for South Africa when it comes to the conversations that will take place inside the BRICS grouping this year. South Africa hosts the summit in August uh, and let me welcome the Sherpa. So welcome to Vion. Uh, my first question to you is uh, a very obvious question that what are the key priorities for South Africa as the chair of this grouping? Well, thank you, Siddhant, for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be on Vion. Uh, you've rightfully pointed out that uh, we are president of BRICS this year for the third time, having hosted in 2013 and 2018. Uh, whenever South Africa has the opportunity to chair BRICS, it's always also about the African continent. Uh, this was the case in 2013 and again in 2018. Because BRICS is first in the first instance the partnership between the five of us, but it is also looking at the larger global South Africa inclusive. So for this year, South Africa has chosen the theme BRICS and Africa Partnership for Mutually Accelerated Growth, as well as sustainable development and inclusive multilateralism. Now, if you break down that uh, theme. It consists of four parts. Firstly, it's the partnership between BRICS and Africa, which will be a major focus of, of our summit. Secondly, it focuses on mutually accelerated growth, given the challenges of, of the post-COVID environment that we find ourselves in, in an environment where you have major power uh, conflict that is impacting on uh, global growth, including of the BRICS uh, member states. And of course, thirdly, we will also look at the sustainable development goals. As you are aware, as a result of COVID, we have fallen back in terms of meeting the targets of the 2030 Agenda on the SDGs. So we will have a discussion on how we can best assist each other in bringing, back, uh, bringing us back on track in terms of meeting our, our SDG goals. And of course, Inclusive multilateralism is a standing agenda item of BRICS. BRICS has always focused on how do we reform the current global multi multilateral architecture that has severe, severe fault lines. So focusing on reforming the global multilateral architecture, uh, both the geopolitical, geoeconomic and geofinancial architecture, would be a major focus for us. So these are, are some of the, our key priorities. Now, of course, mm -hmm. in terms of specific deliverables, as I've indicated, uh, we want to use the summit to focus on Africa and specifically the African Continental Free Trade Agreement, how BRICS can partner with the African continent to advance this agreement for the mutual benefit of BRICS countries and the African continent. All of the BRICS countries are major partners uh, in Africa's development, in Africa's economy. So having an interaction uh, during the BRICS Plus and Outreach uh, Summit that we will have uh, post the BRICS Leaders Summit with leaders from Africa and other Global South partners will give us this opportunity to focus on, on Africa and to focus on the larger global economy. We are also going to be looking at some specific areas of cooperation, especially around energy transition and uh, uh, establishing a BRICS Africa just, just energy transition platform. Uh, as you know, all of us uh, have made commitments to transit to uh, green energy, but we must ensure that it's a just transition that does not impact negatively on our economic growth, does not ne impact negatively on employment opportunities, and also does not impact negatively on poverty uh, alleviation uh, measures. Mm -hmm. So energy mm -hmm. will also be a major focus for us. We'll also look at uh, skills and capacity building for the future. As you know, with new technologies, the future of work is very, very much a subject that is under discussion and under review. So again, we will look at how we can cooperate in addressing the challenges that new technologies poses to capacity and skills development in the workplace. 
and how we can also harness the tremendous opportunities that new technologies provides uh, all of us on the workplace. Uh, so these mm -hmm. are some of our key priorities. And as I indicated, uh, addressing uh, collectively the challenges of the multilateral architecture as it currently exists, and what is it that BRICS can do as a collective to advance mm -hmm the discussions and debate on the global stage, and not just advance the discussion, but practically how can we ensure that we bring back the United Nations uh, at the center of the multilateral order. Uh, I think this is something all of us subscribe to and to ensure that the current uh, multilateral order reflects the current global reality, which is quite different from when the United Nations was formed uh, almost 80 years ago. So you mentioned about trade. Now, uh, we know that there have been talks about usage of national currencies. Uh, uh, what kind of conversations are happening inside the grouping regarding the usage of national currencies? And we also saw reports of a BRICS currency. If you can perhaps elaborate, uh, is it uh, a work of fiction or is it something that is being concretely seen within the grouping as something that is feasible? Well, we already have an agreement that we signed several years ago. Uh, the BRICS interbank uh, agreement mechanism that lays the foundation to trade in local currency. So the framework already exists through that MOU that has been signed. What we need to do now is actualize this. And given the current uh, situation that we find ourselves in, in terms of the global financial architecture, you would see that increasingly BRICS countries and other countries of the global south are starting to trade in their own currencies. India has agreement, I believe, with close to 20 plus countries. Uh, I was two weeks ago in Moscow, and this featured very sharply in the discussions I had with the Russian uh, Brick Sherpa, uh, Vice Minister Rebukov. Mm -hmm. And uh, likewise, China is doing the same. Brazil, uh, President Lula was recently in China, and he spoke strongly about this. So I think you're going to see this. This is also already a discussion within BRICS. There's a framework in place. And also, I should point out that the new development bank uh, in mm -hmm. 2022, when it released its next five-year uh, program, took a decision mm -hmm. that at least 30% of new lending will be in the local currency. So this process has started mm -hmm. in terms of lending uh, within BRICS. It's also started in terms of trading between ourselves in local currency. And I think you're going to see this uh, accelerating. And this discussion is, is very much uh, part of the BRICS agenda this year in the finance track. Mm -hmm. uh, and what about the expansion of the grouping? Uh, is the South African presidency take uh, a special focus uh, on expansion because we all know that many countries are keen to be part of an expanded BRICS grouping. So if you can elaborate on that. Yes, as you will recall, last year at the Beijing summit under China's chairship, the paragraph 73 of the declaration specifically spoke to expansion, wherein it stated that we need to start having discussions on BRICS expansion. And mm -hmm. the leaders tasked Sherpas to start looking at the modalities, rules, and guidelines governing expansion. So a working group has been created that is specifically working uh, on this mandate. Uh, we have had several meetings. We started under China's chairship last year with two meetings. And since South Africa assumed the chairship in January, we've had three such meetings. We have a further meeting next week at the level of Sushapa, specifically discussing expansion. And at the end of May, we have a Sherpa meeting to also uh, take forward the discussions and prepare a report for our foreign ministers mm -hmm. who will be meeting on the 1st and 2nd of June on where we are in this process. As you have observed, mm -hmm. something like uh, 13 countries have formally written two BRICS leaders asking to become full members of BRICS. In addition, about mm -hmm. five or six countries have informally made queries wanting to become BRICS members. So something like 20 countries have formally or informally approached uh, BRICS leaders to become mem full members of BRICS. So expansion mm -hmm. is something that we have in principle agreed to. Our leaders have agreed to the expansion of BRICS, but it's working on the modalities and timeframes of how this will pan out and that's what we are seized with at the moment.
Well, that's a significant comment. 20 countries have reached out for the expansion of uh, the BRICS grouping. Uh, but, sir, particularly talking about your presidency, there's the outreach summit as well. So, uh, which are the countries you have invited for the outreach summit that will take place in South Africa uh, in the month of August? Well, this is a process under consultation, but we are looking at using a formula that we have discussed with the African Union, for which we used in 20. 13 and 2018 that worked well because BRICS is an inclusive process so we must ensure that we are inclusive in the manner in which we invite uh, global leaders from the global south including Africa. So what we have done in the past is to invite the political heads of the regional economic communities of Africa which uh, we have eight that is recognized by the uh, African Union and in addition we will invite the chair of the African Union, chair of the African Union Commission, and the chair of the uh, NEPAD, the New Partnership for Africa's Development. Likewise, mm -hmm. in terms of in invitees from the Global South, in 2018, we also found a formula that uh, was acceptable to all BRICS partners and I think to the Global South as well. We will invite the political heads of all the Global South bodies, like the NAM, the G77, the SCO, uh, ASEAN, uh, CARICOM, the Pacific Island Forum. Uh, so that's the envisaged uh, list of countries we intend to invite uh, together with the African leaders for the outreach. Of course, there's a lot of uh, interest in it. A number of countries have uh, approached us wanting to be invited to the summit. So we'll have to look at how we are uh, involved in a process that is inclusive. Uh, so, one of the key issues that has been dominating Africa are the conflicts, the number of conflicts in Africa. The recent has been the Sudanese crisis that has been dominating uh, the newspaper headlines across the world. So, how much that will be the part of the discourse when the leaders meet in August and perhaps in various meetings as well? Well, look, uh, Global hotspots has always been an integral part of the BRICS agenda, both at the level of uh, foreign ministers as well as at the summit. Not just on conflict in Africa, but conflict throughout the world, be it in the Western Asia region, in Northeast Asia, uh, in Africa, in Latin America, and in Europe. So we will look at global hotspots and how is it that we can cooperate as BRICS countries to ensure that we instill a movement towards peace, towards diplomatic dialogue and trying to avert future conflicts and addressing current conflicts in a peaceful and uh, inclusive manner through the respective uh, uh, United, with the involvement of the United Nations, with the involvement of the regional bodies in the case of Africa, the African uh, union and the regional economic uh, communities and likewise in the case of uh, Southeast Asia uh, for example the situation in Myanmar uh, with the ASEAN in that instance. So I think uh, addressing uh, peace on the global stage in a comprehensive and inclusive manner uh, wherever it may occur. India is a member of the grouping. Uh, how do you see or what does India brings on the table when it comes to uh, the BRICS grouping if you can talk about that? Well, India has been a founding member of the BRICS and has played a critical role uh, over the past uh, 15 years that we have met at the that we are meeting at the level of summit. Uh, I have been uh, privileged to partake uh, whenever India has chaired, in, as recently as way back as 2012 at the De Delhi summit and subsequently the Goa summit. And India has brought tremendous value uh, to the BRICS uh, on all three areas of cooperation. As you know, we are uh, arranged in such a manner that we have three pillars of cooperation, the political and security, the economic and finance, and of course, the social and people-to-people -people interaction. And in all of these areas, India has been a critical contributor like the other BRICS members. It was in New Delhi that we in 2012 started the process of looking at establishing a BRICS bank which ultimately turned out to be the new development bank and that was the the initiative of India 
to look at how we as countries of the global south should uh, develop our own multilateral development bank and so india has been critical in a number of important developments over the years in uh, advancing brics cooperation including uh, the standalone statement that we had on on addressing terrorism including the issues of global peace and security as well as uh, the tremendous economic opportunities that we have through the BRICS Business Council, uh, where the Indian chapter plays a very important role uh, through the Women's Business Alliance, and of course, through the Think Tank Council, where Indian academia and think tank have been an important dimension of our cooperation. Uh, so there are all these comparisons when it comes to various groupings and uh, there are comparisons when it comes to BRICS as well. Now G7 uh, is going to meet in Hiroshima. Uh, G7 is a grouping which is seen as a powerful grouping. BRICS is also seen as a powerful grouping. But in terms of economics, in terms of the economic might, do you think that the BRICS grouping has outgrown G7 now? Well, let, let me say that when BRICS came together as a formation, we did so with a common agenda to advance the agenda of the Global South as a collective and addressing the fault line that exists in the global uh, geopolitical, geoeconomic, financial architecture. That is what BRICS is about. BRICS is an inclusive process. We were never formed as a block in uh, opposition to any other block, nor were we seen as a counterweight to any other block. It is about ourselves and how do we ensure that the Global South is not marginalized as we have been uh, constantly marginalized in terms of what is happening on the global front in reshaping a more inclusive uh, and equitable uh, global architecture. So, of course, the G7 is there for a long time and the G7 is about the Global North and they cannot uh, speak for the Global South because they do not have the same challenges and experiences that we, we are having as the Global South. And that's why you see a tremendous, tremendous interest from a large number of emerging market developing countries, very important countries from the Global South, wanting to have a formal relationship and join the BRICS. They're not asking to join other bodies. They're asking to join the BRICS. And that's because we are doing certain things that is appealing to them in terms of addressing the imbalances that exist in a very unequal world at the present time. So my last question, and perhaps this can be a very controversial question as well. Uh, President Putin, there's a warrant against President Putin by the International Criminal Court. Will that prevent President Putin to travel to South Africa and then attend the summit in August? Do you think so? That can be an impediment? Well, let me say that President Ramaphosa has sent out invitation to all four of the BRICS leaders. All of the countries, including President Putin, have accepted the invitation and they are all looking forward to attending the summit uh, in person in South Africa in August. It is the first time in four years as a result of COVID that we are convening in person. And I was in Moscow two weeks ago where I met uh, the Russian BRICS Sherpa. The, they are preparing to attend the summit uh, and South Africa is preparing to host an in-person summit uh, in August this year. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, sir, for speaking to Vion. It was a pleasure speaking to you and getting this in-depth knowledge about what South Africa will be doing when it comes to its presidency of this mega grouping. Thank you so much, sir. My pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir.